Tom, I wanted to talk about the passing of Arbor Bly because in some ways he's what started the pathway that led to our friendship over the years. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good and, point. And for me, it started back when I was in IBM and I was, uh, I had done a lot of personal development work and somehow somebody recommended Iron John. And because of my slow reading speed, I thought, well, I'll get the cassette. And so I was driving around supporting mm. customers uh, and listening to Iron John. And there was challenges in my, what I call my practice marriage, my first marriage. And I can't explain it, but I'm listening to this story and I'm overwhelmed with grief and sadness. Yes. But no idea what it was. It was terrifying, actually. Because, you know, usually when you're tearing up over something in life, you know what the cause was. Right, right. That opened the door that led to taking the Sterling Men's Weekend and then leading hmm. my men's inquiry for 12 years and then taking the New Warrior Adventure that I later thought was that's a good touch up. And my first book, Finding Our Fire, and then Finding You with the Men in Grief and work and then and so on that was like the, the the spark that lit an extraordinary rich experience that i really believe is one of the cornerstones uh, cornerstones of contributing to my life yes yes and that is a tribute to bligh i mean that's yeah. what bligh did for hundreds probably hundreds of thousands of men you know he men out there who had not quite had enough fathering or the right kind of fathering, he was able to really just zoom in and touch them in a way that was overwhelming sometimes. You know, the grief would just pour out. So the guy was amazing, just amazing. I, he's got my respect and my love, you know, for all that he did for all the men of this country is just incredible. How did you first learn about Bly? <sighs> well, I'm not really sure how I first learned about him, but I remember... You know, before his book came out, before Iron John came out, he would write these little booklets. They're about that thick. And they were basically Iron John in, in a, a sequence, you know, it was like a, like a sequel, like a, like a um, <laughs> I don't know what you would call it, but it was, it was like he, and I would wait for the next one to come out. You know, it was like, oh boy, the next one, the next fly sequel was coming out. And it was like, I just loved those things. I just ate them up. Because he was touching a nerve in men, and, in, and certainly in me, uh, about the importance of masculinity and the goodness of masculinity, yeah. the fierceness of masculinity, yeah. you know, all kinds of things. And, you know, the, the dreaded parts of masculinity, too. I mean, it, it wasn't all sweet and flowers. It was, you know, it was a lot of shit in there. But, uh, you know, that's what he did. He was able to help men see all of those aspects inside themselves. You know, and when we do that, we start owning our stuff in a different kind of way and help men to understand, too, that maybe they hadn't been fathered so well. Maybe yeah. they did have a lack there that, that uh, really missed the boat for them. And uh, so, you know, he, he just had a huge amount of respect for me. And, and uh, I just love Bly. And, of course, the thing with that TV program, the uh, what was it called? The the. Um, Oh darn! Something, something of men, you know, it was for the it was a PBS special or NPR or something special with Bly, where he talked about you know just the whole thing, and he was interviewed the whole time. It's a really a great special. Uh, that that uh, I can't remember whether I was reading his books before that or after, but that was another piece that got me involved with him. A gathering of men with Robert gathering Bly. of men. That was there it. you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he was pretty brutally attacked uh, for even standing up for men back then, you know, yeah. saying, saying there could be something good with men. And, and I remember right. uh, uh, hearing about that and uh, getting to go to a workshop he did uh, in my area. And it was on what is your mortality project? It was such a cool name. Hmm. What do you want to leave the world? And he talked about how uh, it is it is an aspect of many men that they think about this. Yes. And in my way, my interpretation of it, it was like giving us permission to embrace it 
and hone it, not try to disregard it. Yes, yes. But really refine it and go, what do you want to leave the world? And, and the way to I see did, it, to see yeah. it as something of value. Yeah. You know? And it was an aspect and he led a discussion. It was just fantastic. And I, I told the guys I wanted to uh, get to meet him more one-on-one. It was a pretty big group of men with the organizers. And they said, well, if you'll drive him back to the airport, then uh, <laughs> you can do it. <clears throat> How about that? And I had started trying out poetry because I knew nothing. I had no experience of poetry uh, be, and the men's work kind of opened it up because a lot of men would read poems and they still really didn't have much meaning to me. I thought, I'm going to dig into this and see what it is. And I'd written some poems. I thought I'd show them to him. And I'll tell you, I was terrified of showing him my poems after I met him. And he was a very compassionate, but powerful person. He had a gruff side. You know, and I, oh, yeah. I thought, wait a second, I'm not ready for this. So I <laughs> stuffed the poems in between the seats. I went, Man, you know, later I'll let them. <laughs> many, many years ago in my kind of early development of working yeah. with stuff. And so, go ahead. Did you ever give him the poem? No, this is a, the story gets better. Okay. So I'm loading up the car. I get, say, I open the door, say, get in. I'll load your luggage. I'm loading up the car with his luggage to go there. And I get in the car and he's reading the poems. He found them. <laughs> okay. He found them wedged between the seat. Like, like Bly can smell out poetry hidden. And if you understand <laughs> who he is, you get it. And he's reading it and he's going, he, and I said, oh, those are my poems. I'm just starting. I don't know anything. He, he said something simple like uh, in his kind of a, a, how would you describe it? Like a gruff voice or something? Yeah. He says, uh, he says a good start. And he goes, would you like a tip I learned from Ezra Pound? Well, if anyone knows poetry, knows he's another champion of Ezra poetry. Pound, sure. Well-respected poet. Oh, boy. I mean, like one, and I thought, yeah. <laughs> and, and he said, make every line create an image. Hmm. You know, work to get every line to create an image, a story or something. Like, like something's evoked. From interesting, yeah. yeah, and I worked to. In fact, I worked the the long this long story short of it. I worked to improve it, and then I had been friends with uh, the poet in resident Ron Bays at St Andrews, but never did anything with poetry because it was alien to me. Right, right. And right. contacted him, and he helped me polish it. And then the Raleigh Men's Center published a book of poetry, and I still have it downstairs. And how about that? My poems are in it. All right. <laughs> and it opened a whole nother world. It was just hard to explain the world of an, another kind of what I'd call permission to hear the poems and just interpret whatever I did from it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. What a great story. When you first met him, you were an active therapist at the time or was it before that no i was an active therapist okay. certainly but uh, he was kind enough to write a blurb for my first book ah. uh, a really nice blurb and uh, bless his heart i really appreciated that was that here i am a therapist yeah. who is interested in percussion and is focusing on men and grief i mean it was just all the things he was talking about were the things that that i was connected to you know so yeah so bless his heart for for writing that up. It and didn't. I, the funny thing was, it didn't get there in time to get on the back cover, which was really a shame. Uh, it was a little bit late. So the I had Elizabeth Kubler Ross on the back cover and Hope Edelman and and uh, somebody else I forget, but uh, I could have had him. Damn, so close. Well, you know that could always be on another revision or update. You know I should have done that, but changing that cover is a real yeah. pain in the butt. But. Uh, yeah, I should pull that quote out. I've got it someplace. You could probably just put it on the website with the book. I think I probably did. Yeah. I think I probably did put it someplace. I'm not sure exactly where. I, I, I'll have to. I forgot all about that stuff. But I haven't forgot about Bly. What a yeah. fascinating man and just a wonderful man. And uh, did you know he was married to a feminist? No. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. No, I got that secondhand, maybe thirdhand. Um, but people would snicker when they'd say it, you know, 
It's yeah. like, yeah. here he is, this, this guy who's just adoring masculinity, you know, yeah. and he's married to a very potent uh, feminist type woman. So, well, you know, polarities often work well together. Yes. And, yes. You know, and yeah, they, there you they go. probably both honored and respected each other enough to, to yes. discuss it or not discuss it, you know, there you go. It, it really did grab me when I heard a friend of mine in Charlotte said, did you know Bly passed away? And I missed yeah. it. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I want to do a, a conversation about our experience interacting with Bly. Uh, I salute you, Robert. That's right. I that's salute right. you, sir, for all that you've done. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I have a photo of me with Bly, a Polaroid. So cool. exciting. So I'll, I'll put it in the area below or on yeah, the Yeah, you something. should. That's very but cool. It was, uh, it was such a rich experience to one, be in a one-on-one -on -one workshop with him. And then the other was to get to drive him to the airport and get my poetry critiqued by him. There you go. And an Ezra Pound uh, comment. How about that? Yeah. Now, my, what's interesting is my friend from St. Andrews, who was very passionate about poetry, is a very good haiku poet, Mike Salibi. He apparently drove him to the airport and he was almost late. And I mentioned, I said, Do you, did you happen to remember when you came to my college? Either it was a time, I wasn't into poetry at all in college. So he might have come and says, oh, Bly's over there. And I went, that's okay. I'll, you know, have a in the dorm. <laughs> I'm sure it meant nothing at that time, but Mike offered to drive him there and it was on a tight time period. And he, so when I, I mentioned Mike, Mike Salibi, Bly said, oh yeah, he almost killed me, but we got there on time. <laughs> <laughs> he, says, he said, he drove like a bench and my friend Mike's brilliant and very intense. Is what, there was a connection back to a, a good friend from college as well that overlapped with Bly. So I enjoyed it. But, you know, the thing about Iron John is it's a book that I think you almost need to read multiple times yeah. throughout your life. Yep. I just started to re-listen to it, and I'm convinced I'm hearing new things yes. that I didn't hear before. Oh, it's a very dense book. There's a lot in there. And it's, it's excellent to hear it because uh, if you can get get a copy of it you know reading it's great but it's almost richer to have Bly read it and that's what yeah. i found i wonder if that book will take off now in popularity Maybe i don't know i'll put Maybe a link will. in the text below to find yeah. out but that'd be a good thing to happen actually it would be an excellent piece i, I just got to the point where the guy is uh, offering to take on the demon in the woods and uh and he goes with his dog to the edge of the woods and there's the swamp and the giant creature grabs his dog and pulls it in. And he goes, I must be at the right place. That's it. You know, and <laughs> that does. to me, there's so many little moments like that that took a while to sink in mm. of understanding uh, the gift and the value and the challenge of maturing as a man. Yes. Yes. The, allowing the, the necessary socialization to support doing it mm. as well. Yeah, that was a great book. It's a great book. Makes me want to read it again. Good stuff. That's what I wanted to do is just take a moment and talk about it. And uh, it Good. had a big influence on you and me. And I do recommend if you haven't read it, uh, do and don't worry if you don't understand it all. It's one of those things that you need to let flow over you. When you, you say, go. Tom, it's not yeah, like a the, literal this, this, and this book. It's no, a it's, listen to it and then let things bubble up and notice a, what comes. Happens. It's like a fungus. It'll grow on you. <laughs> <laughs> right, but a healthy fungus. Oh, right? man. Really yeah. good stuff. Really good stuff. Excellent piece. Well, Robert Bly, may you be in a better place. And uh, thank you for all you've done and the deep contribution to my life. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs>